Josh Johnson, move over Trent Johnson. Derek Smallwood, take a hike. Austin Silva, move on over. Our guest here today is the newest, as of this filming, the newest addition to the John Harden High School State Wrestling Champion. Sir, if you would, tell us who you are. My name is Christian Jello Santos. I wrestle for John Harden, and I'm the 113-pound state champ in 2024. And like we talked about just a second ago, we've got both of Josh's, Josh Johnson's uh, 08 and 2010 review video on the channel. We have his brother, Trent, which was most outstanding, 2018. Derek Smallwood, 2018. And then Austin Silva's 2023 video. And mm -hmm. we actually done all – of John Harden's videos at Josh's house back in the summer of 23, all four. Uh, of course, you guys will see a photo of all four at the time of John Harden state champions, and it was cool to get everybody there. And when you won yours, you were coming off the medal podium. I was there, you know, with the referees, and I saw you, and you said that you'd watched all of them. Uh, you yes, said you watched all the John Harden videos. So walk us through, man. Tell us. How do you get into wrestling? What what gets you into it? So before I did wrestling, I did do jiu-jitsu in Tennessee. And I did okay. start wrestling in Tennessee. Uh, my, my professor, he, he told me that, like, because I did it for a long time. He wanted me to get, like, wanted me to get better. And I said, I should do wrestling. So I went to, like, this club that was connected to my school, did it for a year. And, yeah, I just fell in love with the sport and kind of stopped doing jiu-jitsu and all that and just focused all on my wrestling. Yeah. About how old were you there? Uh, I started in seventh grade, and that was the COVID year. I remember qualifying for state, and then I got cut off that year mm. out in Tennessee for AU. And then my eighth grade year, uh, I got I got fifth, fifth at state. Okay, no, I just just curious. Um, now, you, what year did you come to Kentucky, man? Uh, I think twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. I believe. Okay, no, I just just curious. I, I I didn't know. I'm sure a lot of people didn't know that you know you come from Kentucky or from Tennessee. So that's cool, cool little tidbit. And you are the third person that we've done a video with just in the 2024 state champions that said they started in jujitsu. Lane Kaiser, of course, you guys have saw his video. He uh, competed. He was – I'm not exactly sure what belt he made it to, but he was in jiu-jitsu when he was younger. Lacey Gilbert from uh, Woodford County, she said the exact same things that she started, and now you. So it's kind of cool that you you guys found it when you were younger, and then you kind of – I don't want to say shifted, but you kind of developed a love for wrestling and stuck with it. Um, they're – I don't want to say jiu-jitsu and wrestling are the same because they're complete different uh, ends of the spectrum. Jiu-jitsu is, you know, chokes and arm bars and leg bars, submissions. Wrestling is more for the fall. I, I think the biggest glaring difference from people, if you're not familiar with the sports, is in wrestling, your goal is to stay off your back. In jiu-jitsu, that's one of the first things you're taught. Go to your back, get in guard, and start working if you get taken down. So I can see where there's, you know, you got to give up one to get better at the other, but they're they're both a great base to have. So the when you go to to John Harden, you walk in into the wrestling room. I guess that would have been what two years ago now. Three. I started my freshman year. Freshman year. Okay. So you you walk in three years ago. You got Coach Josh there, uh, Coach Josh Johnson, a um, couple other people there with, with the program. When you walk in. Is it like I can be a state champion here? I can I can spread my wings, if you will, and get to the top of the podium? Or is it, you know, let's see where this crazy ride takes us? Yes, at first I was just one. I just liked wrestling. Um, I didn't really expect myself to be really good at it. I mean, I did qualify for state last year, the year before, got fifth, but it wasn't, I wasn't as serious. And then I didn't, I didn't really think much of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, no, that I, I'm just so many people have so many different stories, and you hear, you know, guys that we've done videos with, they'll be like, "I I was only wrestling because um, it it made my dad get off my case. I didn't have to get a job, or um, 
you know, my brothers wrestled, so I felt an obligation to wrestle, whatever, whatever the case is. And then they'll get in and they'll be like, I didn't realize I was good at this until I won X tournament through the season, or I didn't realize that I was good until I beat, you know, three of the top four ranked kids in the same weekend at this tournament. And I was like, gone. I'm pretty good at this. And it's just cool to hear the different uh, perspectives, the different um, how we got to where we are stories. And you talking about qualifying for state last year, that'd be the, as of this filming, the 2023 season at 106 pounds. Of course, you're a sophomore. You come in sixth place. So respectable, respectable there on the podium. You had, um, of course, Austin win it. Got to see Austin and his backflip and his toboggan yes. win it. Uh, that was whenever he come to Josh's house, it was the middle of July, like 110 degrees outside. And he come in with that orange toboggan on. I was like, man, talk to me. He's like, man, I just like my toboggan. Okay, bro. If if that's, if you like your toboggan, that's cool. I was like, my goodness, I would burn. Flip. He's got long hair too. I was like, I don't know how you're standing that, but I guess if you're used to it. Now coming into this season, knowing that you place, you're on the podium. Is it when October 15th comes around? Is it, and I'm, I'm not saying that it's never, you should always strive to win. You don't ever want to sell yourself short. You always have the the uh, preparation that you're going to win every match. Now, you may not always win every match. I'm talking to the youngsters in school. But when you walk into that, to the mat room there, practice has started on the, the 15th of October or whatever day it started, October, depending on how the, the weekend fell. Is it is, – is your mentality, I know I can be a state champion this year, or is it, like I said earlier, I'm just along for the ride. If I place, fine. If I don't place, fine. I'm just here to have fun. Talk to us. So my ultimate goal was to win state this year, and I did. And um, But at first, my mentality was, like, I was I, I got too stuck up with the numbers and the statistics. The rank, I would stare at rankings, and it would, it would mess up my wrestling. Not until probably about maybe like a month out of state, I just cut that off, stopped looking at it, and then that just made made me wrestle better. I just noticed it, and then that's what really helped me with my mentality when I when I started wrestling these guys. I just wrestle different and wrestle better. I I completely understand that. Sometimes you can get caught up in, and no offense to our good buddy uh, Ranger that does the rankings, you can get caught up in the rankings. You can get caught up with. I know I beat this kid twice in this weekend, but he's ahead of me or um, whatever. You're looking who's who's on your tail, who's ahead of, whatever, instead of just doing – controlling what you're responsible for. You know what I'm saying? You can't control the rankings. You can't control who is wrestling a – it's easy for a team to go out and schedule – a bunch of scrub teams, and no offense to teams just starting up, no offense to teams that maybe aren't the best, but it's easy for a hammer to go out and get an undefeated record, 50-0, and 55-0, and whatever, and never go out of the first period, but never be pushed, never be challenged, never be tested on am I in shape enough, Am I? is my cardio good enough, is my technique good enough, is, you know, insert whatever variable here, and – Somebody that does that, yeah, they might get a number one ranking. Yeah, they might be um, undefeated coming into the state tournament, but they've not wrestled nobody. They've not wrestled nobody. So when you put away what you can't control and you worry about, I know nobody's going to be in better shape to me. Nobody's going to be a better have better technique than me. I know I'm the best wrestler in this weight class. Everything else, who cares? That's when you see improvement. I mean, it it just is. That's that's when you see yourself get better. So let's talk about your state tournament run this year. Of course, you're a junior coming in. You We'll talk about – I don't want to spoil it with your record, but you come in the first round, you wrestle Jason Maggard from Harlan County. You win that by a fall – in a minute, 37 seconds. Second round, you're wrestling Jackson Mayberry from Union County. You win that by a fall, three minutes, 45 seconds. 
You get to the quarters, you win a seven to three decision over Blaine Kimry from South Oldham. You win that by a seven to three decision, and Blaine goes on to get fifth place. You get to the semis, you're wrestling Brennan East of Walton Verona. You win that by a fall, three minutes. And Brennan goes on to get sixth place. Now we'll talk about your finals here just in a second. You win that final semifinals match, knowing that you're going to the to the state championship. Like you said, Mr. Mendigo, it's where you wanted to be. Talk to us. What's going through your head? What's the emotions there? Well, I knew I was really excited about after I ran up for my uh, semifinal match. I knew this is what I will work for, what I, what I put my offseason in, what during the season, my extra practices, and I was just ready. I was ready to ready for that match and then get my state championship. No, I, I get it. And, the um, of course, the way we do our – Kentucky does the semifinals is we have, like, two mats going – we had the semifinals, boom. You look over, I I was on the table, I was working the table for the Zach Scott match, and I didn't I didn't see which match finished first. I would have to imagine yours did, but did your match finish first? Yes, I remember finishing first and then trying to look over to see who won. I was like, I was like, I want to see who my opponent I was. I, know. I got you. Now you look over and you see. Did you get to watch any of Zach's match? Uh no, nah, I didn't really look at them. I left okay. it to the coaches, and then he would tell me what I need to know. Uh, I got you. I got you. So you find out you're wrestling Zach Scott from Johnson Central. Had you wrestled him before? No, I have not. Okay. Um, you know, Johnson, excellent wrestling program. Uh, they've had a state finalist for uh, from 2017 to present. They've had at least one wrestler in the state finals. And let's see, 2017, 18, 19, 19, 22. And in that time period, they've had five state champions. So pretty good, pretty good wrestling program. They come in state runner-up this year. Um, does Coach Josh or anybody else give you – Coach uh, Derek there. I saw, I saw Derek run around Smallwood. Um, does he – does it, anybody give you like – Super secret advice before you go out to the to the finals, like super super secret John Harden for your ears only advice, or what do they tell you before you go out there? No, he just tells me to do what I always do and then stick to what I know, and then he would uh, he would tell me what like whatever I need to know about my opponent and just just to watch out for things, but not to be thinking about it too much where it stops my offense, and then I got just you. to wrestle my match. I got you, and of course. One of the highlights for me of the – of course, I got to officiate the girls' state tournament. We'll talk about the girls here just in a little bit. But I got to line up the finalist, um, Commissioner Angola. You know, I was on the other end of the building. He hollered at me. I, I said, I want you to line the finalist up. And I was like, yes, sir. I got you. And went back. And when when you're back there warming up, do you kind of peek over at, at Zach and be like, all right, I, I know I can do this, or I know, you know, this, I'm going to try this right out of the gate, or does that even enter your head or anything like that? Yeah, I get a, I got to, I got to see wh who, where he's, where he's at, how he looks some, when I were warming up, but that's about it. Okay. No, no, that's fine. And it was, it was cool to get, get to line everybody up and, you know, 106s, you know, over here, you over here, 113s, yada, yada, yada. And that was, that was a pretty cool for me because, the uh, as I mentioned so many times about the review series, how we need to kind of amp up what we're doing at the horse park and how it, there needs to be more flair, more pizzazz, more of a celebration for, and it was cool to, to get to do that. Now, the video that we have that we're going to watch has the parade of champions, the face off, the match, and the medal ceremony. We're going to get it pulled up here, and of course. My typical tagline, you're seeing what we're seeing. We're here at the Kentucky Horse Park at the Alltech Arena. It's our first year back at the horse park after having to take a three-year hiatus because of Miss Rona and her shenanigans. It was good to be back in an arena. It was good to be back with eight mats. It was good to be back with the feeling of this is a state championship. This is not just another weekend tournament in the gym. This is – 
as Ric Flair would say, this is the bright lights, it's the big cities, it's big arenas, it's the way it should be. So, man, we're going to get going. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the Marine of Champions, presented by the U.S. Marines. This game was the 2024 Wrestling Championship competitors. Of course, there you are. I believe you're the sign bearer, correct? Yes, I am. Cool. My expert camera work here. Presented by UK Healthcare. Let's meet the finalists. The winner of the Jersey Family Class from John Harbour. His junior, from the 52 Jersey, Christian Dallas Santos. Good camera running out, man. It's a long run, isn't it? From Johnson Central, an eighth grader, with a record of 38. There you come out, man. Get yourself loose. All right, so right out of the gate, Zach comes out the aggressor. Yes. He comes out and he starts locking up, trying to pull on your head there. And he gets a takedown right here, right out of the gate, puts you on your back. Yep. <laughs> Are you thinking, oh my goodness? Uh. Yes, I was, I was. I was ready. I was trying to get off my back, and once I saw the out of bounds, I was obviously trying to get out, get to get to reset, and then on this little walk right here, I was like, "I'm fine. I'm fine. All I gotta do is get out and get back to my offense." Then, I got you. So right, you know, less than, well, I guess, 32 seconds in, Zach's taking you down and got a three count or got a three point near fall. There, you get up, get your one. And, but you don't look, like you said, to be fr like frustrated. You don't look to be thrown off your game. Um, what is your game? Are, are we, what, a takedown cut, a top ride? What are we looking to do here? Usually I, during the season in my, all my other matches, I'm a takedown cut. But during this match, uh, I, I, I caught my turns easily, so I kept, I kept, kept with those. There you go. And you get, you get a takedown. You've got Brett Branson. Out there as an official, really good referee. You get a try to get a tilt there and roll through. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And the assistant referee there is Randy Wood. Um, Randy, I believe, wrestled for Ohio State back in the 70s, so some pretty good wrestling knowledge out there. Now you got legs in. Are, were you typically a leg leg rider? Yes, I started doing that this season. Okay, no, that's, that's fine, man. I just was... So he hit, he hit Zach for stalling. On the bottom there. He wins the toss and defers. You win and you automatically take down. And the uh, I guess on, on the bottom, um, you know, 113 pounds, man. You guys are. Uh, very wiry, if you will. Um, I 
hard to hold down. You get up, get your one. We're neutral. Nice shot there. Zach's trying to cross face you out of it. You're trying to keep yourself in bounds. I think, did you look for a star right there? Is that what you look yeah, for? Yeah, I held my fist out like star or whatever. Yeah. He, Zach bumped you up, and you were able to pressure in with that and get a pretty good head and arm. I don't think he scored off of it yet, but that was a nice, nice pressuring in there. There it is, you get your takedown. So now you're up six to five. Once again, we need all one six pounds to take the Do you remember hearing the crowd? Because you're the second match out, and you know, there's a pretty good crowd here in the in the arena. Uh, uh, I don't know if you there. It, but you know, it's in the match. Um, I kind of zone zone in and don't hear hear much noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got to officiate the, the state tournament twice, once for the boys, once for the girls here. And you're you're so far away from the crowd that like when you're watching it, you really can't hear. But if you take your concentration off, you can hear it. You know what I mean? You can hear it. So Green's choice. And he takes neutral. Because I don't think he wanted to be under you again. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> and I can't blame him. I mean, you've done, every time you've been on top, man, you've been able to get some tilts and keep him down. So lift, lift, lift. Another good takedown. All right, Randy, get out of the way. You're right in the view of our wrestling here. There you go. Out of bounds. All right, he turns in. You got you're trying for a half there, but I think that was more of just like a positioning. You really weren't trying to run it. Yeah, more to keep him down. Big lift. Good return. Two, three. Four. You get another set of near fall there. All right, so you, you look over at the clock there and you see about 30 seconds. But anything can happen in 30 seconds. Did you have the, let's just keep riding him because it's working or cutting or what was going yeah, I was just thinking, there? don't let them score and don't get pinned. I got you. Another big lift and return there. Right there, man. I think the whole arena just for a second thought, oh, my gosh, he's going to pull it out. But you win, man. An impressive performance, 14 to 5. Excellent job.
And I believe you're running over here to the coaches. Yes. <laughs> Excellent job. Of course, here's the uh, medal ceremony. So outside of that first flurry by Zach of that first 32 seconds, you dominated the entire match. Got to wrestle Brandon. He wrestled Lane as well. Here's Clayton. I believe his grandfather is legendary Connor coach. Um, Wayne Bedetta. And I, I believe coming in, the Douglas kid was ranked number one, correct? Yes. Uh, yes, he was. And I, Zach Scott beat him, I think, in the quarters. Yes, it was in the quarters. Podium, get your medal. Got to put the headphones back on. <laughs> and that's where this one ends, man. So I'm sure you probably watched it back hundreds of times by now. We're filming this on the 22nd of March, 2024. So just a little bit more than a month removed from winning it. Not with, every time I sit down and edit a video or I have to watch them, you know, 10, 20 times to get everything done right. There's little things that I miss in video. So watching your match back, does anything play out differently? Like actually seeing it as opposed to the way it is, I guess, in your memory? Mm, no, not really. I remember. I mean, I don't like really forget. I don't really forget stuff in my matches. <laughs> okay, no, that's cool. I just just like to ask because some of the guys that we've done videos with that have never seen their video from like back in the eighties, they can they are on it. They know every. Yep, we got a bounce here. Yep, I take him down here. Yep. I mean, just the way everything is so clear to them. And then some guys we meet with from just a couple years ago. They'll watch it and be like, I don't remember doing that. What I don't remember I did that. I don't remember that. So it's kind of cool to get everybody's, you know, perspective on things. Like I said, outside of just that first initial flurry by Zach, you pretty much dominated the whole match. I mean, no other other way to say it. And Zach was coming in as an eighth or middle school state champion. He like I said, eighth grader. Um Coming in, he won it, I think, what was it, two weeks before that, three weeks before that, something to that effect. So you just didn't beat just a random, you know, wrestler. You beat a really good um, middle school state champion. And your record ended up this year 53-3. and three. So phenomenal, phenomenal performance. And you have the opportunity next year, man, to, to do it again. And uh, tie coach Josh's record to be a two-timer at – at John Harden. Um, so I guess the the goal for next year, man, is what, 120? What, you going to stay at 113? No, nah, probably going to bump up to 120. Then plan to win it there and tie with Josh, like he said. No, I get it. I get it. And the um, that's the, the beauty of, of, of doing the series, man, is being able to look back on, like, what 
people predicted that are still in school and be like, yeah, I went to, I wanted to go 120 and then they hit a growth spurt in the summer and have to wrestle 126 or even 132 or whatever. You just never know how, how life is going to go with certain things on that. But like I said, this excellent performance. You, you, you could tell that you had some experience. You could tell that you've been wrestling a while because most people could have got flustered, could have completely got through off their game plan whenever they got taken down, put on their back, right out of the gate in the state finals. Because those oh, the, the lights may be dim in the arena, but make no mistake, those lights are bright on you, aren't they? Yes. Knowing everybody in the building's watching, knowing this is it, man. This is the match that I have worked all year for the state championship bout. We're not here by accident. We're not here by um, just because I wanted to show up and wrestle. I've had to beat four other people to be here. The eyes of the state are on me. I know I can do something special. The the eyeballs are on me. The lights are bright. I got to perform the best I can. And you did it. You You really did. So we like to give everybody the opportunity before we in videos um anything you'd like to say add take away anything of that nature man the floor is yours just know that hard work pays off uh, well that's what i did i had a, i would go to extra practices go to weekend practices and then look work on me no i man and w whatever you did it worked for you and that's this series we've said it in other videos but you can't always, and I'm just going to throw out some names here of some of the more uh, prominent names we've had on the channel. Your Kyle Rochelles, your Jacob Mertens, your Austin Myers, your David Cars, your Bruce Steps, your Dave Barnes, Josh John. We go on and on with names, but you can't always have them come to your house 24-7 and do private lessons with you. You can't always just say, hey, hmm, I wonder what so-and-so, you know, uh, I wonder what Chris Dunn has to say about this. I wonder what Joe Carr Jr. has to say. I wonder whatever. But this series, I mean, you can pack around so much knowledge on this little phone here and be like, oh, yo, I know Christian, yeah, hard work pays off. He said it. He didn't get flustered. Hmm. And it's great that we have this uh, series so the generations coming up that watched you win your state championship now can hear what you have to say, your advice. And they can say, well, if it done it, if it worked for him, it should be able to work for me. Yes. Now, earlier we talked about the Girl State Championship, the Girl State Tournament. Of course, this was the first year for the Girl State Tournament. And I, of course, I got to officiate that. And there were some people come up to me. They were saying, you're going to get to do – a brother sister state championship review because everybody was thinking that your sister was was going to win it. I think she came up just a little bit short, but nevertheless, talk a little bit about your sister for us. Yes, so we started wrestling at the same time for the same reason. Well, she was obviously she she actually weighed in about eighty five pounds. I think the second day at the hundred pound weight class, but she knew she was at, she knew she was at the, one of the top 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 girls wrestling in that bracket, even though giving up. Nearly fifteen. She giving up fifteen pounds. Yeah. Uh, what was her name? Refresh our memory. Naya. Now that's right, Naya. Of course. And she did she come in what third place? Is that right? Third place. Okay, that's what I thought. And I was like, man, that that would have been cool to be able to do a brother because that would have been history. You know, brother sister um, state champions in the same year. And maybe next year, man, she can get to the top of the podium. Maybe you as well. We can do a. Uh, a, a double, you know, a brother sister review video that way. Um, man, I think we've covered a lot of ground here. We've, we've, this is a great review video. Uh, excellent performance, like I said, by you. Um, guys, I wouldn't want to be in the 120 pound weight class next year. Wherever you decide to go, I wouldn't want to have to wrestle you because you're, you're pretty tough, man. You, and you, you've got that. You've got that crown to defend, you know what I mean? Yes, thank you. All right, man. Well, guys, I believe we've reached a good ending point. Christian, man, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. It's going to be a great video. 
Thank you all for watching. We will see you guys and girls on the mats.